Christians speak louder than louder than louder than louder than louder than cages or wings. Which do you prefer? Ask the birds. Fear or love, baby? Don't say the answer. Actions speak louder. They speak louder, louder than louder than actions speak louder than. Hello. And welcome to another After Hours. I am Jonathan Silverstein, the Artistic Director of Keen Company. We are an off-Broadway theater company in New York, and we uh, create theater that champions identification and connection through stories about the decisive moments that change us. I am so happy you are with us for another After Hours. Uh, and tonight we are going to be chatting with the fantastic, wonderful, and sweet actor, Dan Dominguez. Uh, before we get started, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, do a brief land acknowledgement. I am coming to you from Bangor, Maine, which is the traditional land of the Penobscot peoples. I would like to thank and pay my respect to elders, both past and present. And if you are joining us, thank you. And if you encounter an indigenous person in your travels this week, I hope you'll extend some gratitude. Now, before we get going, I would like to welcome aboard my clever compatriots, Ashley and Billy. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Hello, clever compatriots. My gosh. Are you We're really pushing the alliteration. I know you come prepared with these now, don't you, right? Yeah. You, you have them planned hey. out for the next four weeks. Mm. Uh <laughs> I'm working on it. I am working Good. on it. I've got Good. I've got everything set. He's got a little <laughs> notebook where he writes them all down in. I love it. I love it so much. How are you guys doing? Well, how are you, how are Mr. You? Billy Reese? I'm I'm Standy. I'm just Andy. I you know, I early on in the after hours mythos. We said we were going to drink during the after, after hours, which we never ended up doing. Sure. But I did I did just come from a virtual concert of mine where I was drinking. So I I will be drinking during this after hours. It's a real after say. hours. It's a real after hours. Yeah. So just now, a warning. Can you just tell the audience at home about your concert this evening? Yes, I did a concert with Broadway's Future Songbook um, this evening. It ended five minutes ago uh, with Lincoln Center. Um, and it was supposed to happen in person last year, but we just did it on Zoom right now. And it was delightful. Can people find it later than now? I think I, I will see. I think it'll okay. be on the YouTube page for the New York, um, New York Public Library of the Performing Arts or Whichever Just one go that ahead is. and go follow Billy Reese on all social media outlets so you can get that information as soon as possible. You'll find what you have to find. Yeah. <laughs> I will I will say personally, as someone who has went to several Billy Reese shows, it is always an entertaining yep. and thought-provoking evening. Um, I would say clever, the <laughs> word I use tonight to describe you both. I would say your lyrics are clever in the best way. Thank you. And I will always say that Johnny Silverstein is the number one person you want in your audience because <laughs> if you're doing musical comedy, because his laughter fills the air. Oh, it's fabulous. <laughs> it, it really would... makes you think your writing is good, you know? <laughs> I do remember. I do remember one your most recent concert at Fifty Four Below. I was sitting right behind your head, <laughs> and I was like trying not to laugh too much because I knew I was like right there. I think that was on purpose. He piped. Yeah. He piped your voice in. Right. No, it was hard. I. I. I thought I. I lost my good luck charm, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. Well, speaking of people, we love to laugh with. Is that a good segue? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a great segue. I think we should bring in our, our guests for this week. I am so excited. Ladies and gentlemen, a keen alum was uh, in uh, War of the Worlds among, was it War of the Worlds? Yes, it was War of yep. the Worlds, yes. Great. Um, among as well as the uh, host of the Sorry Wrong Number pre-show. Yes, 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 great. So it was both. I mean, uh, just amazing, an amazing performer. Um, I can't wait to have him here. Let's talk to him. Dan Dominguez, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hello, my clever compatriots. Can I be your cunning compadre? Yay! <laughs> Throw a little Spanish in there. Why not? Love oh, it. great. Thank you. I got something for next week now. <laughs> <laughs> cunning. Write that compadre. Cunning compadre. <laughs> Just like that. it sounds. Compadre. Yep. Well, welcome, I'm, Dan. I'd love to just give a quick little introduction to you for uh, yeah. everyone following at home. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Dominguez has performed at some of the biggest theaters off Broadway as mm -hmm. well as throughout the country, including the Public Theater. I've heard of it. Bam. Uh -huh. Atlantic Theater Company the Alley Theater, Arena Stage, the Guthrie, and the Goodman. <laughs> he has been seen in film and TV all over the place, and he holds an MFA from American Repertory Theater Institute <laughs> for Advanced Theater Training at Harvard. At a little yeah. school in Boston. Yeah. yeah, I usually cut the beginning part out and just say I went to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, we've... yeah, actually, I can say that now because I don't. Maybe I shouldn't talk about this, but that program doesn't exist anymore. There you go. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. This is after hours, right? We can get into it. We yeah, can we can dish. Up. Totally. Billy's got a drink. We're all ready to go. <laughs> okay. No one told me it was a drinking after hours. Yeah. But well, that was the original idea, but it kind of never took hold. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's never too late. We're going to have Take an after after tonight. hours party and we're going to talk about it. Yeah. And how cool is it, Johnny, that you were in Banger, Maine? It's crazy. I, yes. I love Maine. Well, I and I bet Maine. you I bet you know Bangor, Maine because of its famous resident, Mr. Stephen King. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I worked at I worked at Portland Stage in Portland, Maine several times, um, and there was there were moments when I thought, should I drive up to Banger <laughs> <laughs> to do what? To yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm I'm gonna walk by and take a picture for you because there's oh. a new sculpture that needs to be um, that uh, uh, that that needs to be shown. Oh my gosh! Will you hold up Dan's headshot or something so he feels like yes. he's there? Like take the picture. Yes. <laughs> yep. We don't you know. Bet. I'm uh, for, uh, Johnny knows this. I think, uh, but I'm a huge horror movie fan. So whenever I used to go out of town to do plays, used to go out of town. That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We'll be back. I would I would find a movie uh, like a horror movie that was shot in that city or that location, and I would go there and take pictures. That's what a nerd I am. I love that. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. What, were, love what seeing... were some of the best um, best uh, monuments that you came upon in that search? Oh, oh, the topper. I went to Portland Center Stage in Portland, Oregon, once to actually not to work to see my partner. His play was being workshopped there, mm -hmm. and I discovered that Mount Hood was only an hour away and that were the that's where the Timberline Lodge is at and that's where Stanley Kubrick filmed the opening scenes of The Shining. <gasps> so you know, we took a day trip, we drove up there. I was like a pig in you know what. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It was amazing. It was, I was like a little kid. It was ridiculous. That's amazing. <laughs> what so what would um is it possible for you to name one of your favorite horror movies? I know well, you must know, love so many. Yeah. Well, my favorite horror movie is The Shining, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. That's why oh, that, so was that was such, the best, best. That was like that. That's why that was such a seminal moment to be able to go to that. I mean, he shot the movie inside. Most all of it was shot inside on sets, but those were where he shot exteriors at that hotel. So that was like that was like a ridiculous dream come true. So The Shining is number one, and then there's Rosemary's Baby, and mm. there's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's the innocence from the '60s with Deborah Carr. Yeah, I could just go on and on. This is not a. This is a. This is a theater podcast, not a horror movie podcast. Yeah. but I, I could go on. I could go on and on. There's a little bit of crossover. I mean, we have Carrie has been a musical. Yes. 
Uh, the, Evil the Dead Shining has been, been a, a musical. The Shining. Evil Dead has been a musical. Reanimator has been a musical. The That's Shining true. has been an opera. So there's some crossover. <laughs> There it, misery, and, misery was it? Was oh, it, misery, was it yeah. Misery was a play, and Reed, our general manager, loves um, Bat Boy. That's kind of a horror it's musical. Sort of a horror. Sure. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah, not? Yeah. Wasn't there a Silence like of that? the Lambs? A funny Silence of the Lambs musical? Yes. Yeah, I think there was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. So, hmm. yeah. So, so Dan, <laughs> speaking of theater, oh, let's turn back <laughs> the calendar several years. Go back oh, to um, when Dan was a little bit of a youngster, perhaps. Yeah, More yeah. of a youngster than you are now. Mm -hmm. And um, curious sure. um, how you, you know, started to get involved in theater. Was it, and, and like when you knew that, oh my God, this is something I might want to do. Uh, pretty late. I wanted to make movies because I loved mo horror movies. I decided as, as, a, as a young kid that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And I went to college for filmmaking. I went to Penn State. And I was there for a year and I thought I made the biggest mistake. Oh no. <laughs> like I love film, I love film, but I don't I didn't like filmmaking. Mm. Um, like the nuts and bolts, seeing behind the scenes, it sort of destroyed it for me. So I stuck it mm. out, got my film degree, worked at a, at a production company for a year outside of college and was producing like industrial video, industrial videos and commercials and working with actors. And I would suddenly be like, I want to be doing what they're doing instead of what I'm doing. So I quit my job and went to acting school. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah. And was that when you say acting school? Was that getting your MFA? No, that was I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, you're. Am I remembering this correctly? You're. You were from New Jersey. Yeah. Okay, so you went. You sort of like we're in New Jersey. Went to sort of the Pittsburgh area or that area of Penn State, and then yeah. went back to the city moved back home with my family, went to acting school in the city for two years, then moved out, struggled for a bit. And then a mentor of mine said, you should go to graduate school. And that's when I, that's when I went to Harvard. Harvard. Of course. <laughs> because no one else would have me. I tried Yale, I tried <laughs> NYU. <laughs> and Harvard, Harvard wanted me, so that's where I went. Yeah. I'm always curious for people who end up in programs which are like really sort of classically driven. Did you yeah. have any love of like heightened language, Shakespeare, any of that before going into school or were you, or do, was it just like you were in school and this is what how they taught acting? Yeah. Not really, I wasn't yeah. a huge fan. I wasn't a huge fan of Shakespeare to be honest. I know that's mm -hmm. blasphemy. No. Um, I was, uh, no, I just, um, I was actually just trying to find something that I liked and that I was good at and people yeah. thought I was good at. And acting, when I went to acting school here in New York, it was like a light bulb. But I didn't I didn't know plays. I had never seen a show on Broadway. So um, I just ended up in theater because that's where most actors get their training. You get trained in theater. So, mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have those ideals. Like I didn't want to play Hamlet. I didn't want to play Richard II. I didn't have dreams of doing Falstaff or anything because I didn't really know those plays. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> um, so, so it was just a matter of getting to do something that I felt good about doing, that I liked to do. And of course, there's always the factor for people like, oh, you're, you're pretty good at this. You should keep up. You should keep it up. You should keep uh -huh. doing it. So that, that helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were there yeah. were there any early scenes you did at school that that you were like, okay, I could do this play? <laughs> do you know the play The Runner Stumbles? Did you guys ever do The Runner Stumbles? No. no. Um, it's a play about a priest who falls in love with a nun. Oh. Hmm. I can't even I can't even remember who wrote it. It's it's been made into a movie, but mm -hmm. the movie's very it's out of print. It's hard to find. Um, and that was like, you know, that, that had scenes with big emotional arcs where you had to like break down and you had yeah. to get heated with this person and you had to have semi like make out scenes. And so that was, that was, um, the runner stumbles. That was, um, I think the movie has Dick Van Dyke in it, Wow! <laughs> but I did it. I did this scene with a beautiful Italian woman named, named Olivia Mancino, who's still a friend of mine, lives in Milan, Oh wow! tours the world. Um, but that was the first scene. That was the first scene where I felt like a real actor because you know, I had to do all those big emotions. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I assume you were playing the priest. I was. <laughs> Why do you assume that? 
<laughs> well, you know, I you know, I it was just a, because it was one of the lead role. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing the priest. And you know, when you're a young actor, you want to do, you want to be like the best actor you could. So I went and I interviewed a priest <laughs> and I, and I said, what would happen if you, what would happen if you fell in love with a nun? And he thought I was the oddest thing. He, <laughs> he tried to get me to become a priest. He's like, you know, son, have you thought about? <laughs> I love no. this. I want this play actually. I want a two hander where it's you interviewing this priest about your, about your acting role. And he wants me to become a priest. He's trying yeah. to sort of convert me into becoming a priest. Yeah, it was, it was, it was very, very funny. That's incredible. You know, when you're an you're an actor, you lick the furniture, you roll around on the floor, you take yeah. off your clothes. You think like that's what it means to be a real actor. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then you learn. <laughs> <laughs> then you learn technique. <laughs> Did you yeah. have any insight? Well, you went through film school. Did you have to do any sort of thesis project, or did you make a film, or or you know produce any? student work when you were in school? I made a couple of films. And now that we bring them up, I'm hard pressed to think, where did they end up? Because <laughs> back then, a hundred years ago- Well, we're gonna ago, play a little clip now. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, back then, a hundred years ago, we didn't edit on um, an Avid or on a, a digital. We yeah. had to cut film and we had to tape it and splice it, you know, like that was- that was Awesome. That was, even before, you know, even before there was any sort of um, digital editing. So yeah, I have a couple of films hanging around somewhere. Um, my thesis film was like a sci-fi, it's a film I produced, I didn't direct or write, but it was like a sort of sci-fi futuristic thriller. I was secretly called, hoping it was yeah. gonna be like a horror sci-fi movie. <laughs> yeah, totally. The guy, the guy who was directing it was really into special effects. He went on to like work on The Lord of the Rings and big, big movies, oh but this gosh. was, we, yeah, we were at Penn State together and he wanted to produce this. Um, I just remember trying to find extras because he had this scene where he had a bunch of dead bodies lying and they were all hooked up and I had to get like 18 extras and it was, <laughs> Did you then yeah. go into school as an actor and be like, well, when I was making films, <laughs> you had like a whole different perspective. <laughs> well, I did, I did do some casting casting yeah. when I was making my industrials and my commercials. So I did have a perspective on like, there would be days in a casting office where I'd be like, God, these actors, they come in and they have to do these three minutes and they don't know me. And I'm sort of, sort of sitting here judging them. And then I have to choose one of them. Mm -hmm. So I sort of, I sort of had a sense of what actors went through. Um, and I still got into it despite that. <laughs> yeah, you still, you still <laughs> in. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it was it was amazing. So I did I did have a little bit of insight, not not like acting insight, but business insight on what mm -hmm. actors went through and how difficult and cutthroat, not cutthroat, but how, you know, how ephemeral it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Did you sit did you sit your 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 cat your um classmates down and say, "Look, look y'all. <laughs> this is this isn't as much look. art as you think it's going to be." <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all, when I was casting asthma video number three, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we were really looking for people who could turn it on in front of the camera. So you need to go, you need to go in there and be asthma victim number three. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> no, I had I had no great I had no great um, advice to impart. And you know, like I, when I went to acting school in, at the American Academy, there there were kids who had already done movies, had already been in mm -hmm. plays. I had done mm -hmm. nothing as far as acting was concerned. So they were they were teaching me more than the other way around. Yeah. It's, in, it's interesting though, you feel like you got a full scope of the industry really early. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was- got the I full was, realm, yeah. I was working in a, in a, I was working sort of like on, on a low rung, like industrials and commercials are not like big budget features, but you know, I, I had to create a budget and I had to figure out how to feed a crew and, mm -hmm. and plan out and plan out a shoot day. So I got a little bit of experience on what it was like to be, yeah, on that side of it. And I didn't so like it. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you for, for recognizing you know, that you needed a change or, or uh, yeah. And yeah. to switch gears like that. So it's not easy. Yeah, well, yeah. So when you graduated um, uh, from Harvard, <laughs> and I assume, did you move back to the city uh, right away? I did, yeah. 
And what was what was that like, or or what was your? Can you tell me? Can you tell us sort of like what one of your first jobs was, uh, post grad school? Oh boy, lots of low, lots of no paying theater or low paying theater. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yep, I hear you. You, you know, fringe festival stuff. Mm -hmm. I've done four or five fringe festival shows in my lifetime. You know, you're doing a show in a theater that has no air conditioning and. <laughs> In the middle, in the in the you know, in the middle of August, the hottest possible time of year. <laughs> the hottest possible time of year. You're doing shows for like three people who show up. Two of those mm -hmm. are your family members. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of, you know, and I and I got out of grad school with an agent. So I was I, I felt like I was one of the lucky ones, like a commercial and a legit agent, and I still didn't work for a long time. You know what? I'm lying. I got out of grad school and I stayed in Boston and did um, Shakespeare in the park in Boston. I oh, almost forgot. Oh. Yeah, a, a Commonwealth Shakespeare in the park. I did the Scottish play mm. with J with J O Sanders. Whoa, oh. that's awesome. That was my first gig outside of graduate school, and it was um, it was uh, the the guy who runs Commonwealth Shakespeare is an ART grad, and so he always likes to hire a few grads outside of school, and I was lucky enough to be able to stay in Boston an extra two months to do that show. And then someone saw me in that show and I did another show in Boston right after that. It was like, yeah, I had a false sense of security. I was like, oh, sh oh crap, I just got out of grad. I just got out of grad easy. school, book two, book two jobs back to back. This is gonna be easy. <laughs> <laughs> then came back to New York and didn't work for two years. <laughs> Well, you you work all over the place now. I mm -hmm. mean, I feel like I feel like you know certainly in the 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 before times. Uh, I feel like I saw your name everywhere. Really? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I pop up here and there, and people are kind enough to give me jobs. So um, I feel very blessed. I feel very blessed, and that I was able to stay in New York a lot of times and do that work. Yeah. So, and also to also to hook up with a company like the Civilians, mm -hmm. that um, that you can feel part of an ensemble, part of a group that welcomes you in, or the public where I've worked several times, where they it just feels like a family um, when you work there. So, yeah, it's I think it's more a testament to people who want to who want me to be a part of their stuff than to anything I've done, probably. <laughs> Well, you've also had what is one of my favorite New York action experiences to ask people about, which is that I believe you did a run on a soap. Is that right? Um, I did three episodes of As the World Turns, I think. What was that like? I'm always so curious. I feel like that world sort of is, doesn't exist in New York anymore. Yeah, no, they're all gone. They're not here anymore. All my, so I think, sad. I think there's, they're all in LA and I think there's only like three or four of them left, That's but crazy. that was, I played, um, so I was recurring. So I did, three, I did three episodes, but I played I played a hotel clerk, and so there was it. a lot of like checking people in. Uh -huh. um, I had a scene opposite Billy Magnuson. You know Billy Magnuson. Uh huh. He was on that soap, and I'll re that's my partner. Hi. <laughs> that's okay. He's getting ready to to audition. It's a guest um, star. He's mm -hmm. a it's yeah. Um, so Billy Magnuson was in that episode. And what I remember was, I think it was one of the first times I was on an actual set. And I remember thinking, I can't hear any of these actors. I can't hear what they're saying. Can anybody, what is Billy Magnuson telling Like we need to voice everyone. <laughs> I, can't hear my, I can't hear my cue. And that's when I learned, oh, there's microphones right here. So <laughs> you don't have to project. That is so that's, funny. But, that, that's but, what I learned on the soap. <laughs> don't your co-stars need to hear you though? <laughs> Uh, but I guess I mean I guess they do. I guess when you when you're a regular, you get used to that sort of style of working. But I was just mm. coming in, I was just coming in having done theater and and just thinking I can't, I can't hear any of these actors. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> book it. You better book it. Um, <laughs> so that was the, that was the wake up call for me when I did soaps. It was like oh you don't you can be you can sort of tone it down. You can be a little bit more mm -hmm. um, intimate mm -hmm. and. Uh, and yeah, that was fun. And those things move fast. Like you don't have time. There's no time to do anything there. They're like shooting 30 pages a day. So that's just crazy to me. It feels like it's and so fast, insane. The other thing I learned is those actors on soaps, you know, 
soap actors, I think, have a get a bad rap because they're on a soap, but they have to learn reams and reams and reams of dialogue and make it sound real and get it word perfect. It, you know, it's, it's, that's, it's I, my hat. I tip my hat to them if I had a hat. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. <clears throat> yeah. I love hearing yeah. that you had to tone it down to, to be on a soap opera too. <laughs> you learned right? too much from the soap opera. I wasn't. I wasn't the melodramatic hotel clerk who had a killer twin. No, that wasn't oh. me. Damn. <laughs> but was that your secret backstory? Yeah. Of, of course, I'm giving it away now. You'd imbued it, yeah. <laughs> not just a not just a twin, but a Siamese twin, and he was sort of under the. <laughs> yeah. Under the, he was he was under the uh, what do you call it the counter that no mm -hmm. one could see, but he was down there. He was in a coma, but he's gonna come back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We were still connected. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, as the world turns. Yeah. I liked that soap. When I was a kid, I used to watch it. I never <laughs> watched soaps. But, you know, they were a rite of passage for many actors. And, mm -hmm. you know, big big mm -hmm. stars started on soaps. So. Yeah. Yep. That's what does not surprise me at all that Johnny was a little kid watching soap up. 100%. <laughs> and I think it was Meg Ryan who was on As the World yeah. Turns. Mm -hmm. And I think she played... No, no, no. It was um, Anne Heche played Twins. Oh, see, they were one. everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Twins everywhere. Did you grow up so, in Bangor, Maine? Johnny? I did not. I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, but my mom oh, okay. lives up here now because my brother lives up here. Okay. Yes. Lovely. And, and Lovely. indeed, I'm going to say I'm about a quarter mile away from Stephen King's home. Damn. Yeah. Damn. I'm gonna get up there sometime, but you're gonna take yeah. a you're gonna take a picture for me. I, I got some yeah. pictures for you. I got. I will get some pictures for you. Okay. I, I was up here last year at this time and the sculpture was like very much in its infancy. Now it's done and it's gorgeous and kind of creepy and beautiful all at the same time. So oh. I, would, I would expect nothing else from Mr. King. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally, totally, totally. Talk about prolific, yeah. So he lives um, pretty uh, uh, like kind of across the street from Susan Collins, the Senator, <laughs> and two doors down, <laughs> In a very big house, there is a gigantic Trump Pence sign. And so I definitely feel like there's some drama going on in there. What a neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Susan she Collins is a Berlin. Is, yeah. Yes. Susan Collins is almost a bigger horror icon, if you ask me. <laughs> oh she can be terrifying. She can be terrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Has she appeared in any of his books? I don't think so. Hmm. Hmm. I haven't read some of the recent stuff, but. She should. She should have played the monster in It. No, I'm That's terrible. That's <laughs> I terrible. Was about would, to say, you, yeah. would you have love to appear in a horror movie or would that be like too inside? You want to, it's too much of the oh magic. Oh my God. Oh my God. Any, and I've appeared in a Stephen King short film. I didn't know that. That I went to Maine to shoot. <gasps> what? That co-starred Ann Bobby. You know who Ann Bobby is? I know that name. I know that name. Mm. Ann Bobby was in Born on the Fourth of July with Tom Cruise. Oh. She she made a lot of movies in the 80s, did, did a lot of theater. Anywho, when I was at Portland Stage, I met this filmmaker and very nice guy. And then years later, and he's a horror fanatic like me, years later, he got the rights to shoot um, a, one of Stephen King's short stories. <gasps> you know, Stephen King does this thing, Dollar Baby, where he will sell you the rights to a short story for a buck. You can't sell it anywhere. You can't post it on YouTube, but he'll let you make a movie out of his short stories. And they got permission and they made this movie and I played the principal in this school. And, <laughs> um, How and I went crazy. Up, it was like all your dreams in one. <laughs> yeah, I went, up to, I went up to Maine to shoot it, um, spent a weekend outside of Portland shooting it, I think, um, with Ann Bobby. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a great time. And he recently contacted me because he was making a slasher film and he wanted me to audition for it. And I did. And I didn't get it. What? Mistake. I know, right? I know. And I didn't get it. Um, but um, he told me I was too fit for the role. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, we wanted this character to sort of be going to seed and a little like. <laughs> You know his best years are behind him, and you're just too fit. And I thought, well, okay, I can take that. Yeah, yeah that's not, get, there could be worse reasons. Reason. Yeah, that's not a that's not a bad reason to lose a part. But I was gutted. I so, gutted. I so wanted to be a part of that film because I love slasher films. Oh. oh my god, 
Did you say like, hey, just give me like a month, I'll go to seed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't have time. They didn't have time. Uh, oh, just a baggy uh, sweatshirt or something? Yeah, like a fat suit. Can we do a fat yeah. suit? I'll grow. I won't be. I won't shave for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Next time. Next time. Next time. Well, if Keith right, ever does a horror play, you're. Please. Yeah. Don't worry. If you ever revive, wait until dark. Mm -hmm. If, mm -hmm. if you ever do this terrible thriller that played in the '80s that everyone talks about, the name I can't remember, but it like. It had a, a hot tub and someone gets electrocuted at the end of it in the hot tub. This sounds oh. amazing. I need to look this up immediately. This it sounds was, like a game play. It, was, yeah, it wasn't the one with Gwen Verdon that closed an opening night, right? There was one that was like a thriller and it closed very early. It could have been that. It could have wow. been that one. But know. yeah, if you guys do death. a hot tub, man. If someone dies in a hot tub at the end, they get, I don't know how they did that on stage, but. Um, yeah, if you ever do Death Trap. There you go. Oh, please. Have you done it? No, but I've done Wait Until Dark. I've never done okay. Death Trap. All right. Yeah. I would I would think you'd be a natural for for um, for Death Trap. I mean, it totally mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the Christ I, I call it the Christopher Reeve role. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I've only seen the movie. I could do that, yeah. yeah. You could do that in a, in a second. And th that character yeah. hasn't gone to seed. No. <laughs> He's not supposed to, right? He's supposed to be like handsome and fit. Yeah. And, yep. yep. I'll, I'll try for that one. And then in a couple of years, I could play the Michael Caine part. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or maybe even the Estelle Parsons part, right? She played, <laughs> I think she played. I'll take it. She played it. the wife. Oh, wait. I'll take it. She, she played, played the, the wife. She played like Helga, didn't she play like Helga, the cleaning woman or something? Yeah, she, yeah, she played. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Marsha Mason may have played that role. I may be maybe, wrong. Maybe I mean, not in the movie, but maybe when it was on Broadway, Estelle Parsons did it. I'm getting them all mixed up. Oh, that's funny. Because it was Diane Cannon in the movie, right? Yes, mm. yes, 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 the yes, great, yes. The great Diane Cannon. Mm. Yes. So get that, you know, in a year or no less. Problem. When, you, okay. when you guys are up and running, get that horror script and I'll be there. All right, all right. <laughs> Well, you you yeah. were you were you were so great um, for the two pieces you did for us this season. Um, oh my gosh! Uh, yeah. Not only War of the Worlds, but I gotta tell you that sorry wrong number that whole intro. I can't tell you how many compliments you got. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so sweet. That's so sweet. Uh, uh, thank you. That was uh, that was fun too. Even though I was covered with blankets <laughs> in front of a microphone, Oops. trying to get the best sound for you that I could. Uh-oh, something's uh -huh. happening at Johnny's yeah, place. Yeah, I'm having a faulty faulty right. ring light. Faulty He's ring in light. banger. He's in uh, banger yep. near Stephen King's house. Yeah, talking about Stephen King. I don't like it. Something's <laughs> going on. <laughs> we're perfectly situated that something's going to come in behind you, Johnny and we're all going <laughs> to terrify. Yeah. Susan like, Collins. So <laughs> Susan Collins is there. She yeah. heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I said, all my all my like fancy voiceover equipment was in Jersey, so I had to use my my little like my little snowball mic, and I covered myself with blankets, and I just <laughs> wanted to I just want to do the best job I could, and that was yeah, it was just it was a lot of fun, and that sort of like thriller horror. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I have to say we uh, for those who don't know, for Cyrog number we did sort of a first act that was mimicking the original broadcast, which was a uh, suspense radio. And it's uh, this announcer sort of describing this whole thing and leading us into commercials and songs. And when we wrote it all out, yay, thank you. Thank you, Wayne. When we, uh, we wrote it all out, we sent it to Dan and I remember getting the first recording back and I literally text Johnny and I was like, I'm so happy. It was just, I was so <laughs> excited. It sounded like exactly how I wanted it to sound in my head. It was so perfect. Oh, that's Oh, that's awesome. Thank so you thank so much. You. Yeah, absolutely. I had I had done years ago, It's a Wonderful Life, the radio play. Yeah. Mm. At Long Wharf. And I was just mm -hmm. doing and I was playing Freddie Fillmore, the guy who like the guy who narrates the the radio show. Yeah. And so I just I just did Freddie Fillmore. So perfect. So perfect. <laughs> yeah. That was that was fun. And I'm glad it was successful. I heard great mm -hmm. things too. Yeah. 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 Thanks to anyone listening who bought tickets. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, thank you. 
it's been fun. De- it's been fun delving into into these uh, sort of classic radio scripts over the mm-hmm. over the the pandemic. Um, War of the Worlds was like I just I knew of War of the Worlds, but I didn't know it that well, and it was just mm-hmm. wonderful to delve into that world and the the. Um, the, the crazy silences of that broadcast and how mm-hmm. scary a silence can be. Mm-hmm. And also the thought that the thought that it would have conv- it would have so convinced people that yeah. the acting was so convincing that they actually thought aliens were were touching down in New Jersey somewhere. I mean yep. maybe that's maybe that's not so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Weirder things have touched down in New Jersey, but <laughs> But um, but just that the, I don't. Do we have that innocence anymore? That innocence of like listening to something and thinking, "Oh my God, this is this is this mm-hmm. is really happening." Maybe the Blair Witch, or yeah, something like that. But yeah, that's why that's why that that story is so special. That broadcast is so special. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Well, well that was a pleasure. That was a ton of fun. You mentioned Long Wharf, and I know you've worked at, like pretty much every regional theater in this in the entire United States. Do you? miss that sort of like traveling around and seeing different cities and and um doing different shows in different places or are you happy yes. to sort of stay in new york yeah <laughs> yes i'm like like i said when i started i didn't even know what regional theater was i thought there was broadway i thought theater was done on broadway and that's where people went to see plays and mm-hmm. i didn't realize i didn't realize that there were thousands of regional theaters across the country entertaining hundreds of thousands of people and so when i got out of grad school and started getting those jobs and I was like, wait a minute, I get to go to a city for two months that I've never been in and I get paid to be there, not only to act, but have my days off and can like roam around and discover yeah. a city. And it, you know, recently people have been like, you need to stay in New York because we need to focus on your film and TV career. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> if, if I have to, but I miss it, I miss it. I miss it so much. You get an apartment and sometimes you get a yeah. car. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go and to the it, alley, oh, if I went to the alley theater and they put you up at the Four Seasons, oof, <laughs> oh. ooh. and they give you a car, it's just, it's just, you know, it, it's like, it's like being treated nice as an actor feels good. <laughs> actually, actually treated with respect. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't, it doesn't happen a lot. Um, but so yeah, it, it. Um, I actually, I so, I so loved going out of town. I mean, I so love, cause I'm still going to do it, but I so yeah. love going out of town and doing plays and, and, you know, getting to travel without having, I went, I mean, with the civilians, I went to Paris. Oh, amazing. I, I, I went to Abu Dhabi with the civilians to rehearse a show. I mean, you know, when would I ever get to go to Abu Dhabi? Yeah. So it was just, it was amazing. It's yeah, it's been a great, it's one of the joys of being an actor is getting to see, see parts of the world and parts of the country. I was going to ask what some of your favorite stops were, but it sounds like Abu Dhabi is hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Abu Dhabi was amazing. Uh, Paris was great because I'd never been there. Um, but, you know, I like going to Portland, Maine. Yeah. <laughs> I did a show in Florida once. I had a great time there. Utah mm-hmm. is fantastic. So, so yeah. And sometimes, like for years, I wanted to go to the Perseverance Theater in Alaska just to, just to do <gasps> yes. a play in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You must be pretty yeah. close to checking every state off the bucket list of performance locations. <laughs> no, not not really. And I want to really? I want to Yeah, I want to I want to correct that cuz there's okay. still a lot of still a lot of places no California, no California theater yet. We'll That's do it. Are you listening? Are you li- are you listening California? Hire this man. <laughs> um, yeah. Hello. I know we got some issues going on right now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, have come close, but never, never worked out there. Wow. Well, I also know that you, I think recently, or maybe I'm getting the timeline wrong, but uh, you started Only Make Believe. Is that right? Is yeah. That, um, that recent? Yeah. I've been working at Only Make Believe for 13 years. Wow. It's not something I started. It's a non for profit okay. And, um, and we we take theater into hospitals and entertain children, mm. um, sometimes sometimes very sick children. And oh. so um, it's it's a job I started 13 years ago, just because I needed a job. I needed us like a side gig, and I didn't want to be in an office. Mm-hmm. And and so I started doing it. And I thought I'll do this for a year or two. 13 years later, you just get wow. I don't know. You just you just get sucked in by the energy, and you get sucked in by the 
the joy that the kids have in seeing you there. And it's not always easy. I mean, you know. I can imagine. Sometimes we go see kids that don't have, that that are sort of like palliative. And, and mm. sometimes you, we're going into behavioral units where kids have real issues and come from terrible circumstances. And, and, and it's just been, it's one of the most special things I think I've, well, I'm still doing, we're now doing a lot of remote stuff, a lot of, vir it's all virtual now, but, mm -hmm. but it's some of the most important work I think I've done as an actor, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And but, is it um, original pieces that you do? What kind of work are you doing? Yeah. They're 45 minute shows that um, are very silly. Mm -hmm. They always have a moral. They were, they're original. They were written by, um, some of the original creators, uh, not a creators, the founders of the company. Um, and then along the way they've been changed and adapted and, and, you know, we're, we're given license to improv the shows. So they've, they've sort of become something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a great, it's a great joy of mine to be able to work with that company. Mm. Yeah. Were you familiar with them, Ashley, before? Have you I knew of them? of them. And then I, yeah. I came across them in association with you and I just think that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it sounds so, like it would be heartbreaking and also incredibly rewarding at the same, you know? It's been all those things. Um, a couple of years ago, we um, went into a facility that was housing immigrant children who had been separated from their families. And we did we did shows for them in Spanish. Oh, um, amazing. Because they were all from Mexico and South America. And um, we would leave those, show in, those shows in tears. Mm. Um, and frankly, if it was just because you know, we expected to go in and see these kids who were very upset, very downtrodden, and they were the exact opposite. They were just mm. eager to laugh and excited that we were there. And it was just, it was a, it was a joy. If the pandemic hadn't cut things short, we would have done like more work there, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, they were, they were great. That's incredible. It feels to me like the sort of the purest form of the, the intention of theater, which is just sort of like a cathartic experience. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, we have a, we have a, a trunk and a backdrop yeah. and a few, mm -hmm. and a few costume pieces. And we all play like nine or 10 characters during a show. Mm -hmm. So it really is like Commedia dell'arte. It really is going yeah. back to like the total basics. And it just goes to show you, you can be in like a, a hospital room where there's people like getting tests next door and there's all this noise. But once you turn on, once you turn on, the kids are right there with you. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty special work. Well, and how special I, I for think. the how special for the kids? Like you're <laughs> you're never going to get a more um, uh, receptive audience, I would think. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They tell you exactly what they're feeling in the moment <laughs> and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what they think of your show. We've had some rough times too, but we've also had some amazing times. Some harsh critics. Yeah. Harsh critics, chairs get thrown at you. Um, so, <laughs> um, but, but uh, names get called, but you know, it's, it's like, it's all part of the, it's all part of the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. It's made me a, it's made me a better actor too. Yeah. It's made me like be able to, I, I think be able to like, um, whatever happens in the moment happens very mm. flexible, very spontaneous. It's made me a better improv actor, even though I never really studied improv. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's made me a better actor in the moment, just having to work with kids like that. And at auditions, like it's given me such confidence at auditions because it's like, God, if I can, <laughs> if I can, if I can do a show for five sullen teenagers, then I can do a show <laughs> and I can go in and, and audition for, for this, this, these people. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, a, someone probably won't throw a chair at me today. That's so, the, yeah, that, that's a plus. The is over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. So mm -hmm. Well, those listening at home, it's only make believe. Is that right? I feel like I would say it wrong. Only make believe incorporated. Okay. You can, you can go to only make believe.org if you want to read about, yeah. discuss, donate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only make believe.org. That's awesome. So Dan, we often have um, young folks watching in who are just getting started with their careers or thinking about doing um, uh, theater, et cetera. And yeah. um, do you have any words of wisdom or maybe even things you might have said to your younger self? Oh boy, wow. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, you can't do it in a vacuum. 
Mm. I feel like um, you have to you have to be around other people, form a group, find friends, read plays together, go see plays together, write plays together, like um, find a group of people that you like to be around and that you want to create art with, and um, and and just spend a lot of time with them. <laughs> <laughs> Be, uh, because I, f I feel like the first couple of years that I came to New York out of grad school, I, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And I felt, felt very lonely and mm -hmm. I had, I hadn't found my people yet. So I would say, seek out your people and, um, you know, Shakespeare is great, but write some new stuff Yeah, <laughs> and write stuff for yourself. This is another thing that I wish I had done sooner, which is create your own work. Mm whatever that means to you, write a stand-up set, write your own play, write your own TV pilot. Um, God, you can shoot a film on an, on a, an iPhone now. Mm -hmm. make, a sh make a short film on your iPhone. No more cutting um, up the film like you had to learn how to do. <laughs> no, no more splicing pieces of film together with tape. Right. No more imprecision. You can, you can do anything with an iPhone. Um, so, so yeah, I would say, um, I would say look for those opportunities for community and look for those opportunities to create your own work because no one's gonna, I mean, no one's really looking out for you except for you, <laughs> to, to, be, to be honest. And unless you have a big social media following and unless you, um, I, I don't know, have a, have a rich father or something, <laughs> <laughs> it's all gonna be you. So mm -hmm. does that, did that, that's awesome. That's that's darn good advice. I wish I had heard that starting out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Those are those things I wish I had. And and people told me that. People told me, you know, you should write your own work. At grad school, we mm -hmm. had David Matt. We had David Mamet come to give us a speech once, and he's like, "You're all wasting your time here in graduate school. What are you doing here? You need to be out there starting theater companies and writing plays. This mm -hmm. is a waste of your time." <laughs> and we were all in grad school at the time, going, "Oh, <laughs> you're like so." Eating your ramen noodles and peanut butter well, salad. Well, I mean, great. I so can I get my money back? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's excellent, excellent advice. And I, I think that sort of trying to find your community and actually just getting yeah. people getting together and reading plays and just doing things, I think. Um, that's solar. Why do I have to? Why do I have to find where my diaphragm is? And then, like me, ten years later, you're doing a show and you lose your voice and you still have to go on. Mm. And you're like, okay, I got to go back and read that stuff I had in grad school and mm -hmm. find out how to produce a sound on stage when there's no sound in there. So mm -hmm. that was scary. That was so scary. Oh. What was that chapter I skipped that one day? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Class I didn't exactly. <laughs> the class I decided to sleep through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how to breathe using your diaphragm. But it comes in, oh, comes in handy. That crazy thing. <laughs> and also you want to be versatile, you know, you want to be an actor who can do voiceovers and who can do Shakespeare, but who can yeah. also do like a Netflix series. Um, you want to be able to do a bunch of things. So yeah, that's Try what I think is incredible about your career. You've done like a little bit of everything. I feel like you've really like have experience in, in all of the things, which is exciting. I've tried. My agents would love it if I did musicals, but I just don't. <laughs> Well, I you did some musicals, musicals with the civilians. I was about to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of music I can handle, but man, <laughs> when I've been asked to do choreography and sing at the same time, it is a mess. <laughs> 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 but that's something I was something I wish I'd spent more time doing was taking singing classes and. But you know, well, we're gonna cook up a horror musical that has one part that's not that's not singing. You can maybe you can be a priest and it'll all come full circle. <laughs> Yeah, and they die in a jacuzzi at the end. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. That might be pa plagiarism, but you know. You know uh, what? Now I'm now I'm dying. I'm dying to remember what that play was. Yeah, me too. I'm heading straight to the Broadway World message board we'll after this to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, is it my favorite time? Yeah. I think it is. I think it is. Time. I think it is. The Keen Question Bowl. The Keen Question Bowl. Okay, so these are just. Lightning round, sort of getting to know you questions. Getting I'm going to, to pick, I'm going to pick them randomly okay. from the bowl. Okay, let's see here. Okay, <laughs> I don't think we actually covered this. What is? Do you remember what the first play or musical or show, whatever it is that you saw? 
as a kid or as an adult or however old you were? Um, the first show I remember seeing on Broadway was Les Mis. Mm. Okay. Okay. And it That's and it one. had Mr. It had Mr. Ricky Martin in it. <gasps> no. <gasps> yes. What a great yeah, time it, to see Les Mis. It was my first ever Broadway musical. We bought tickets to Les Mis. It was kind of janky and upset and d disappointing. <laughs> But Ricky Martin was in it. <laughs> wow. Well, that that was late in the run then. If they had Ricky I, Martin stunt yeah. casting, I'd be I disappointed so, you know, too. <laughs> he was fine. It was just like who did he play? The main guy, Javert. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't remember the character. He was either yeah. he was either Marius or Angelos. I oh, don't. you I think, don't was, think... I think he was Marius. Okay, maybe. that's fair. That mm. rings a bell. That's yeah. Fair. Okay, this is a kind of an epic question. What is your spirit animal? If you had to pick an animal that was your favorite animal or that you felt identified with, what would it be? It's tricky. It is tricky. We oh man, we did we did a we did a um, the Great Immensity, which was a, a global warming show with the civilians. Oh, mm -hmm. and we had this whole thing about sloths, and I thought. They're the most endearing animals. <laughs> and I guess I shouldn't say they're my spirit animal because they're sort of slow and lugubrious and they don't get much done. No, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that makes sense. They're, but they're intentional, but they take their time to get there, which. Yeah. It was like, it was like a whole thing where they, it would take them like three days to come down a tree to poop <laughs> and then three days to get back up. I love that. And there was, we had, we had video, we had video of an, of an actual sloth handler and he <laughs> he wanted to display to the camera person how the sloth moved, so he would he knocked it down from the tree, and then the sloth climbed back. It was oh really no! Sad. So I the, think... the, the yeah, I found a connection with the sloths when we were working on that show. I think that's fair. You're very you're very present person. I feel like a sloth is very present. You know, oh. they're in the moment. Thank you. I should have picked like tiger or lion. <laughs> no, something really no. Aggressive. Grizzly bear, but doesn't suit me. Doesn't suit we me. hear that all. We hear those all the time. Yeah. Give me a slot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kate and they're cute. Are cute. Mm. She did. No. Well. Sure. <laughs> um, if you could have an alternate profession, what would it be? Is there anything, any Ooh. other industry you'd always want to be in? Ooh. Um, that's a good question. Uh. You know, I'm fascinated by city planning, even though it probably requires a lot of math, but I always, I'm always fascinated that like this city doesn't sink into the sea, that everything sort of, well, everything mm -hmm. doesn't run smoothly. Sure, of course. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. like we, we get up in the morning, we do our thing, the trains run, the buses run, somehow people come in and out of the city on their cars or they used to. And I just wonder like who planned, like the guy who planned Central Park, I find fascinating. Yeah. And, how they made the, the the city grid and and how it all just happens without like collapsing. <laughs> you know I, what I mean? I once watched a city planning documentary. It's clearly we need to have movie nights, Dan. <laughs> we do. We and do. I learned that every time it snows, you can tell in like four way cross sections, probably not as big in the city, but there's always like a patch in the middle that where the snow stays. And that's yeah. like wasted space. And that's like a city planner is like, nightmare it's like clearly oh. our roads aren't efficient enough because no one's ever driven in this one center weird space it's fascinating that, stuff right? is, that is fascinating like i want to be the person that that solves v venice's problem yes we can't let the city sink into the sea what are yeah. we gonna do and like i just think those people are so smart how they make everything how everything somehow works you know yeah Oh, again. Well, this is, um, you guys, um, this is like our um, office. I think you want it. I think um, we talked too much about Stephen um, King. Yeah, I think Ooh. we're now. Oof. Um, speaking of which, dream role. Do you have any specific dream roles or dream type of roles? We already said you want to be in a slasher film, but. And no I false do. death and no Hamlet. No, yeah. <clears throat> No, to be honest, I don't dream of doing the great. Like I'm not one of those actors that wants to do the great. I know that's terrible to say. No. But I do love I do love um I've never got a chance to do Pinter. 
Oh, mm. okay. I've always wanted to do the homecoming. I've always wanted to do Pinter. I did a scene from Pinter. I can't remember which play in acting school and I loved it so much. So like Pinter and Ackborn and like all these great British writers I'm drawn to for some reason, but mainly, mostly Pinter. Like we saw Betrayal that was on Broadway recently with um, Tom Hiddleston. Oh my God, I would love to do that show. Yeah, so I Dream World. I'm right. Okay, I love Pinter. So we're, we're, you know, Pinter and maybe a stage version of The Shining. We're kind <laughs> of, get, we're getting somewhere, I think. That's a two show let's, season. That's a two show season. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, a stage show of Cujo. Let's try to make that work. <laughs> Hey, listen, it's a it's a mom and her son trapped in a car. Yeah. Yep. It's all one it's setting. A, yeah, perfect. It's all one setting. You'd have to figure out how to do the dog, but. Yeah, that's easy. We'll get some puppies. War Horse did it. A, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a designer's job. <gasps> War Horse. Yeah, you have guys. Oh, my gosh. Cujo. Cujo the play. Okay. That's brilliant. <laughs> work on getting the rights, Johnny. Come on. King Company okay. Cujo has that. a nice ring to it, too. So. Yep. Yeah. Or we can. For one season, we could call it King Company. Oh, ooh, and, and do three King adaptations. Yes, King takes mm. on King. Ke King's King. I the marketing King writes King. itself. I right. can see that brochure in a second. Done. Cujo is please. a real Keen story. It's about a Saint Bernard just doing its best. You know, that's exactly. it. Under, that's it. under some really difficult circumstances. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you. Those are all my those are my my King Fashion Bowl questions. I love them. Thank well, Dan, you. it's been an absolute pleasure spending time with you tonight. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us and chatting all about your life with us. Same here. I feel so honored when you asked me to do this. I thought, really, me? Who is who are they talking to? So <laughs> I just feel so special. Thank Shout you. out from Emily. Thank you, Emily. Emily we is one of our agree. board members. Thanks, Emily. Um, thank you, but thank uh, you. we were just uh, always happy. Uh, you know, one thing we did not tell the uh, listening audience, I met Dan probably in, I'm going to say my first year as artistic director at Keen Company because you used to work for Art New York. And um, mm. within like several years, you were working so much everywhere <laughs> that you weren't at Art New York anymore. <laughs> and when we, when we saw you, it was always a treat. And uh, oh. we, we just think you're the best. I just I loved working there mainly because I was surrounded by artists. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. That was nice managing that place. Yeah. I enjoyed mm -hmm. I enjoyed I enjoyed helping and being of service. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that was that was a good time. And I made a lot of friends from from Art New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not not for nothing, but got some work out of working from Art New York, some acting work. So there you go. There you go. There you go. There you mm -hmm. go. It's all who you know. Mm -hmm. It's all who you know. It's all who you know and who you clean up after. <laughs> <laughs> well, be well. And Thank um, you. we're knocking on wood for what's going on in the room behind you. Yes. Oh, I, I hear it's very quiet. I think he's done. So we'll see how okay. it went. Okay. Yeah. Break legs all around. Thank yes. you. Thank you. It was a, This was a real joy. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Bye, Thanks for joining us. Bye. So lovely. Oh, another another lovely with another night. amazing artist. Mm. Gosh. Um, I'm I'm loving the idea of a king season. Great. Truly, truly. And he'd be good in Pinter. I could see that. Definitely. I could absolutely see that. Definitely. So let's see. What do we have coming up this week? There's got to be something happening this week. There's always something happening at King Company. As a friendly reminder... You know, we're doing a season of audio theater. Um, so you can go on our website and look for Here Now or go to any of your favorite podcast apps and search Here Now Keen and find out that we have, as of right now, three amazing pieces of audio theater published and out into the world. 1993 by Kenny Finkel. We have Digging in the Dark by uh, Pearl Clegg. And we have All We Need Is Us by James Anthony Tyler all amazing uh, pieces of audio theater, just as exciting and fulfilling as a great night at the theater. So if you're missing off Broadway and amazing actors like Dan Dominguez and getting your theater fix, 
then definitely check out um, any of those shows. And we have two more coming up in the in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. And then, of course, next week on After Hours, uh, we have two fabulous Keen alum. Uh, they mm -hmm. are the uh, two Keen alum tied for the most performances uh, on the Keen stage. Heidi yes. Armbruster and Paul Niebank. Fantastic combo. I cannot wait for that episode. So that's next week at 6.30. Amazing. They've worked at Keen for a long time, and I think we're going to get some good Johnny Dirt stories out of them. So I'm very excited about Thank next God. week. <laughs> We might just meet Johnny and Billy and I are going to just have the conversation. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for joining us again on your Monday night. I hope you all have a wonderful and safe and fantastic week. And we look forward to seeing you at the virtual theater soon. Good night, everyone.